Well, water rights are an interesting thing. I live out west, and a few years ago, my wife and I bought a little ranch, and I just thought I would share our current experiences, a little water war that's going on, and uh, see what what we can draw from this in terms of uh, philosophy or a good way to live life or property rights, that kind of thing. So, you know, I call it a ranch, but we have 40 acres, and right next to us is another uh, 40 acre place. And those folks grow hay on their probably 30 of their acres. We grow hay on 15 or 20 of our acres. And then the other property that surrounds both of us and continues on quite a ways is, I don't know, five or 10,000 acres, a big ranch. Nice lady owns it and uh, has a long term uh, right hand man who kind of manages it and handles the cattle aspect of it. And and then the person who they have doing most of the water work is uh, handling the irrigation ditches, which is a big deal out in the dry western uh, areas, uh, is a neighbor who lives about, he's the next closest person to us, he lives about two miles down the road. And he's a longtime local, uh, Rhodes even named after his family. And uh, he's a good guy, he's a friend, and and he handles all the water. He takes his uh, mini excavator up and digs out the ditches and when they start to wash out he builds the dams up or the the not the dams the banks and uh kind of decides which where to send the water and he's had this agreement with our next door neighbors for many years that uh you know he'll just let him handle all the diverting the water here and there and if they feel like they need more water then uh just let him know and he'll he'll divert more their direction and it's just kind of always worked that way. Well, as it turns out, when we bought the property, I'm not sure if what we were told was exactly accurate. Uh, I don't know that our rights are as strong as uh, as the seller told us. But uh, this, this neighbor who handles, handles the water, he's just always told us, you know, just play nice and things should work out. He says, you know, at any moment, the big ranch could just shut our water off. They have such superior water rights from way back. Uh, I think their their water rights go back to something like 1903, and for our property, it's something like 1914. Uh, and the the big ranch has so much, uh, so many rights to, to, I don't know, however many gallons per minute. And if they took all that they were allowed, we wouldn't get a single drop all year long. And that's those are water rights. I guess it's kind of like owning a uh, a nice car or owning a, a big pile of money. You know, maybe other people all around are like, hey, you're not even using all that money or, or you leave the car parked a lot. It'd be more fair if I got to drive the car sometimes or if I got to take some of that money. But no, property rights are property rights. And this is a, you know, a tangled thing uh, where we we live in a society that a government is who decides and who rules, and, and I don't agree with that system. Uh, and at the same time, I say, well, we, we live in a world where a system that isn't perfect, that I think is evil and bad, it exists. And how do we work within that system to uh, kind of make our lives as good as possible? I'm not going to go and vote or run for office or or do anything like that, but I don't think I'm going to change everybody's view on who owns what, water rights, property rights. Uh, oh, we shouldn't go through the court or through the official state water boss. We should, uh, you know, just let Shepard make all these decisions. Uh, yeah, that that's just not going to happen. So I have to, have to say, okay, for next year's irrigation, what should I be thinking about? Well, this all came to a head when my next door neighbor neighbors as they get older they uh they're getting a little bit a little bit more cranky less friendly and and they've had several altercations with the the ranch hands at the the big ranch and eh, big ranch is not liking them very much at this point and uh has kind of said don't trespass on our ranch unless you're checking the water line or the the irrigation ditches and that is kind of a a right if you have even tiny water rights, you're allowed to walk the ditch on other people's property going all the way up to the headwaters. And uh, we have an agreement with these next-door neighbors who are 
it seems getting a little bit grouchy. <laughs> we, we, uh, yeah, we have drinks with them and, and dinner and we're, we're, you know, we're trying to be good neighbors with everybody. And, uh, we just have an agreement. They always just shoot a text message to us and say, Hey, we're going to be up checking the water, uh, today. And then I just know to expect them. And, and if I see somebody walking, I just know, Hey, nothing to worry about. It's them. Well, it turns out they have been, uh, stirring up a little bit of trouble with the, uh, with the big ranch and the ranch hands were riding along on their horses and they saw the neighbor checking the water line and they went up to him and, Hey, what you, what you up to? And, and he basically gotten there and they had an altercation. Who knows which side is correct about it. But the version I heard from my next door neighbor was that he basically told them he wasn't going to talk to them or the, the ranch manager. He's only going to talk to the gal who owns the whole ranch. And, uh, they used to be friends. I've had, you know, get neighborhood get togethers at the, the next door neighbor's house and, and the, the big ranch owner, she was there and, you know, we were all getting along and I, I'm sure there's stuff that's happened that's gone under the bridge years ago that uh, we're not aware of the, the neighborhood politics and all of that, but yeah, everybody got along and well, that's no more with the neighbors and the, the big ranch owner and, the reason this is something that I care about is the altercation between the neighbor and the, the big ranchers, ranch hands, turned kind of heated. And now the big rancher and the, her ranch manager are seriously considering putting a head gate in where right now it's just going through a ditch and there's a, a an area that's pulled away. It flows into our pond. We have about a two acre pond. And then it flows out of our pond and irrigates our field and continues going down and irrigates the neighbor's field. Well, the inlet where it would come into our pond, that is now likely to be shut off by the big rancher neighbor. They say, you know what, We're, we don't need to be giving anybody any water. We've been doing it because we want to be nice all of these years. But if y'all are going to be jerks about it, then we're just going to turn your water off. And they'll put a head gate in, a locked metered head gate. Uh, and each spring, this is just what my one neighbor told me could happen. Not my next door neighbor, but the guy who runs the water. He's just kind of warning me and saying, hey, uh, this is what could be coming down the road or coming down the irrigation ditch. Um, they could put that metered locked head gate and we would be able to fill our pond up in the spring one time. And then for the rest of the year, we wouldn't have any more water coming in. Just what seeps from the through the ground from the the next wa- pond reservoir up the up from us, hundred yards, two hundred yards from our pond, and uh, that sucks. You know, we have this where the inlet comes in, it, it winds down, and and that we have a little two or three foot waterfall. And anytime you're sitting in our house and a window's open, which is most of the time, you can just sit there and listen to the the waterfall coming in and, and it's just, it's just wonderful. My wife and I sit on the back porch all the time, looking at the view of the neighbor's ranch and listening to that water. And it's just, it's our happy place. This is where we've decided we want to spend the rest of our lives. This is just home. And a huge part of it is the amazing pond with the the water coming into it and the sound of that waterfall. As for the hay farming that we do on our property, it's not a big deal. Um, I think the gross last year uh, that it brought in was something like three thousand dollars, and we, the neighbors who do the actual haying, it's it's the same guy as the water guy who does all the irrigation stuff, and we just kind of they do it as friends, and they don't. It's not really worth it to them to drive two and a half miles up the road with all of their equipment to do the haying, but they do the the next door neighbor's hay field, and they do ours, and. Uh, we give them the the lion's share. I think we might have, well, we lose money every year, but it's because, you know, we have to pay $600 for seed and uh, it, it turns out that, you know, I think we gave them back everything except 300 bucks last year. So, and then we spent more than that in seed. So it, it turns out that it's a losing proposition. We don't really care. We just like that the ranch is getting good use the uh, hay that's grown here 
is uh, after harvest, it is sent to the elk feed grounds that the government runs. And in the long, cold winters around here, there are a, a series of dozens or hundreds of elk feed grounds every 20 miles or so, 10 miles. And uh, it's where the elk can come down out of the mountains and uh, winter there. And the snow is still many feet deep, but there are feeders who go out and uh, sometimes the horse-drawn sleigh, I think that's usually how they're still doing it, and they'll feed hay to the elk uh, each day in the winter, and that's how the elk survive the winter. So that's where our hay ends up going. Our neighbor handles all of that. He, they have the contracts. They sell it to the, the elk feed grounds. Uh, to the game and fish department. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 not a huge deal to us to lose our irrigation, but it, I don't know, it's it's kind of nice to do our little thing and have our land be productive, and it can only be productive if it has water. And uh, it's kind of where we sit. So now the threat is that the head gate would come in, we'd only get that water in the, the spring and nothing else for the rest of the year, and uh, and that sucks. And it's not because of anything we did wrong. We get along fine with the, the ranch lady. And she doesn't live on this ranch. She has other big ranches, and, and she lives on them uh, for most of the year. And uh, But, yeah, we don't have a problem with her. Well, I've never even met the her ranch manager. I, we just mind our own business, sit on our little postage stamp of 40 acres next to the big dog, and and we just try to be good neighbors and not stir anything but because of the other neighbor's behavior we could be losing it now here's what the other neighbor said that i alluded to earlier he mentioned to me to us as we were having drinks about a week ago we had him over to our place and he says yeah i had to run in with the cowboys and and he was you know thinking he was completely in the right and he's he was saying that well you know it's just it's about what's fair and I'm thinking, no, it isn't. It's about it's about property rights. Property is is more important. And the way that folks worked it out years ago, I'm sure it wasn't perfectly fair. I'm sure that the people who had the big ranches had a little bit more powerful of a voice to the politicians who made the laws. But it is what it is. And... Uh, it isn't about what's fair about who gets what water. It's about who owns the rights to a certain amount of property. And water is property out in the West. And uh, we don't own it. We want it. Neighbors have been generous to give it to us. But we have to just know that it can go away at any moment. And that sucks. That sucks. Especially since it's just over a, a pissing match between a couple folks who are getting grumpier as they get older. It's just, it's just too bad. Hopefully it turns out well.